Okay guys, today I have the much requested, since I unboxed it in the last video, Georgie Saddle Bag from Coach. This is an outlet bag. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about a very similar bag at the Coach Boutique called the Beat Saddle Bag, which some of you brought to my attention following the last video. We'll compare this bag with a few other bags so you can get a sense of the size. We'll do some what fits and we'll do some mod shots. And of course, I'll give you an overview of the bag again. Very pretty little thing, so stay tuned. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and SLGs to the everyday luxuries of life. Coach falls somewhere in the middle there. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. Now when I unboxed this in the last video, I said I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it, so I was hesitant about how much of it I should unwrap. Uh, I still feel the same way, although I did end up unwrapping more of it, and I feel like I can put that back together if I decide to return it. Also, someone commented and said, you know, to return a bag, you don't have to put all that stuff back on. I am aware of that, but I think it's respectful if you're going to return a bag to get it back to its original packaging as much as possible because someone else would end up buying it if I send it back and it would be nice for them to have it as nice as it was when I got it. So you'll notice that I do still have a little bit of styrofoam on it in a couple of places and the tag is still on, but it is mostly unwrapped so we can see it well. All right, let's start by giving you just an overview of the bag a little spin. We have the front here with the flap. It has pebbled leather and then the trim is a smooth leather. The pebbled leather is very soft. Uh, the smooth is too, but the pebbled seems even more soft. It has this gold horse and carriage emblem there. And then here's the side with the D-ring and the back, which has a pocket. It's the entire side of the bag there. The other side also has a D-ring and the front again. This side has that coach tag, but I still have it wrapped up. And I'm looking over here at my monitor so I can make sure it's in focus. Here's the bottom of the bag and the top of the bag. As a saddle bag, it is rounded on the bottom with rounded corners. And one of the things that I'm curious about with a saddle bag is having that rounded bottom, will things rush to the bottom of the center? Um, I'm used to having bags that have a flat bottom and things, I can put stuff over here and over here and it stays in place. If I try to do that here, is everything just gonna fall to the center? We will find out. With this bag, it has a flap with a magnetic snap. And when you open it up, there is a pocket right here, which is also the size of the bag. It's the entire side there. And then inside, it is just one big compartment. Not that big, because it's not a very big bag. And then there's a pocket right here, and we will figure out in a bit if what fits in that pocket, if anything. I would say, since this is an outlet bag, oh, and it does have this nice long adjustable, very important, crossbody strap. Um, and I would say as far as the quality of this bag being an outlet bag versus a bag from the boutique. I am not a coach expert. There are a lot of people who know a ton more about coach than I do, but I am learning. I've purchased several of the boutique bags in the last couple of years and I have a better idea of the quality difference between the boutique bags and the outlet bags. As outlet bags go, this is a really good one. I could even see this being a boutique bag. Now, when I look at the photos online, I'll put one here of the Beat saddle bag. I can see a difference right away. I, I, even though I haven't seen this bag in person and felt it, I can tell that that bag is going to be maybe a little more structured, like in terms of the flap, I think would be not as floppy partly because of the trim around the edges. Then that is their glove tanned leather as well. Seems to be a higher end leather than this pebbled, but this pebbled is really beautiful too. And the Georgie bag, let me look at the pictures here. It comes in a couple different color options. I think you have, yeah, you have, no wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. The Georgie bag has, okay, the listing I'm looking at has this color, which is called Redwood. And then it also comes in black with gold hardware. But then let me go back, because I think that there was another listing that had more of a multicolored bag. There are a few of these. There's one that has, it's really pretty. It's um, this color on the flap, but then all of the trim is black. And then this part here, 
So the, the pocket is the CC signature print in the tan, and the strap is black. And then it has little gold studs around the flap. And I think I also saw a patchwork one, although it's not coming up when I search Georgie saddle. So let me just search Georgie. Yeah, here it is. Sometimes the listings, when you search for something on the Coach Outlet, the Coach Outlet site, let me tell you, has quite a few problems, and this is one of them. So when you search for Georgie saddle bag, you get this one and you get the one I just described. There's also one that has the tan CC print on that pocket, but then all the, the rest of it is white. Um, this bag and that bag are 140. The one that has the rivets is 160. And then there's one with patchwork that's 180. And it says it was just reduced. That one's interesting. Not for me, but somebody would like it. It says the patchwork is Cafe Facet, Facet, which is a designer I'm not familiar with, but I've I'm familiar with them working with Coach. The Beat saddlebag, on the other hand, is $450. It comes in four colorways. One, the most similar to this, and it's more of a, a yellow, it looks more like a, a dark vachetta, um, and then it's got a darker gradient around the edges, kind of like, oh, what's it called on a guitar where it has the darker edges and it kind of fades in. It's like a smoky edge. I forget the name of it now. I used to know these things back when I dated musicians. But otherwise, the Beat Saddlebag looks almost identical to this bag. Instead of the horse and carriage, it has a C that's turned sideways, uh, and it has trim like this all the way around the edge of the flap as well. And let me see if it's on the back. It's not on the back, so it's just on the front. Um, but it comes in that, what I would call a dark vachetta with smoky edge color, and I think all of these have a smoky edge, maybe. We'll find out, hold on. And then it comes in a white that looks like maybe it has a smoky edge it's hard to tell in the photo here and then there's one that's a deep red with gold hardware the white had antiqued gold hardware the saddle color had a dark they call it pewter hardware the red i think is also an antiqued gold and then there's a black and gold which looks like an antiqued gold as well they're very pretty but it's a huge price difference 140 dollars compared to 450 for almost the same bag the dimensions too are very similar flip back and forth here i will by the way I will link all the Georgie bags for you to make it a little easier for you. They'll be in the description box below, and I'll also link the Beat saddlebag. Um, okay, so the Georgie saddlebag, let's do dimensions here, is eight and a quarter inches across, whereas the Beat is eight and three quarters, so it's a half inch longer. The height of the Georgie is six and three quarters inches. The height of the Beat is seven, so you get just a quarter inch higher, assuming they are measuring consistently. And then the width on the Georgie is two and a quarter inches. Sorry, I'm not looking at the camera here, getting this information for you. The beat is two and three quarters. So you get about a half inch more space in the, oh no, wait, I had that backwards. The Georgie saddle is two and three quarters. The beat is two and one quarter. So this is actually a little wider. It's a half inch wider, the more expensive bag. So you can possibly fit more. So the, the beat is half inch longer, but a half inch more narrow. And this is a half inch wider, but shorter. Makes sense? All right. Now, let me compare this bag to a couple other bags that I have in my collection so you can get a sense of the size of it. I'm sure many of you have noticed, oh, by the way, bourbon and Coke, yes. Tell you what, that is much appreciated drink in my line of work. Let me show you a couple bags. So what I was gonna say is, what was I going to say? Oh that I'm sure you've noticed that in the last many months, there have been a lot of things that I've ordered and then returned, ordered them online and then returned them. And of course, the reason for that is I'm not going out to stores very much because of COVID. So if there's something that I'm interested in, usually I'd go to a store and I'd look at it in person and I can tell pretty quickly whether I want to purchase it or not. If you're not going out to stores, then the only way to see a bag in person is to order it and then see it in person. And then I end up making a lot more of returns than I usually make. And I don't like doing returns. They're, they're a big hassle, but it's happening a lot. And so I wanted to show you comparison, what fits and all the, you know, the usual stuff, but especially some size comparisons. Cause I think a lot of you are in the same boat there where you're not going out and 
I want to save you the hassle of ordering and returning. Hopefully me doing that will help you to not have to do that. So I pulled in a few other smallish bags that I have. Here is the Coach Emery in the 21 centimeter size. So you can get an idea there. I think they would probably hold about the same amount. I think the Emery might even hold a little more. I've carried the Emery quite a few times. It's become pretty much my default grocery store bag for when I'm doing quick runs. Very similar there. Let me stack those on top of each other. Yeah, they're super similar. The Emery looks like it's taller, but that's deceptive because of the zipper. When you consider the zipper, you lose about an inch off the top of the Emery bag if you want to be able... The thing keeps focusing on my background instead of the bags for some reason. I don't know what what's back there. Is there a ghost back there? So assuming... Oh my god. Why is it doing that? So assuming you want to zip the Emery, then it's really not that much taller than the Georgie. The bottom of the zipper really goes to about the top of the Georgie. So maybe they'd hold a pretty comparable amount because the bases and then the width here look pretty similar. The other bag I wanted to compare this one to is the Cassie because a lot of people know how big the Cassie is or the Pochette Matisse. If I can get things straight here, everything is just all over the place. That's better. So you can see there's a significant size difference there. They're both small bags, but this is quite a bit smaller. The Cassie or the Pochette Matisse would hold a lot more. Do the bases for you. That's always a good way to compare the size of the bags. Corner, there you go. And I usually do the mod shots at the end, but let's go ahead and do it now. And then we'll get into the what fits and why is my hair all over the place. All right, like I said, this has an adjustable strap. Right now I have it on the longest setting, which works really well for me and I'm 5'3". But before I model this, I wanna show you something on the strap that I noticed. When it arrived, it was set to this hole. Yeah, you can tell there it's uh, that one there, you can see how it's a little oval shaped. It's more warped and the other ones are round. That's because these holes are a little bit too small for the little thing that goes through them. So you really have to push it and then it stretches out the hole that you have it set on. Not a big deal, but just something to be aware of. And I don't know if that is this bag or if it's all of them, who knows, but that's happening to my bag. <clears throat> okay, let's see how this looks on. And one of my concerns with a bag this small is since I'm pretty round, how that works on me. Like these things always look great on the skinny girls, but uh, how does it look? How does a tiny bag look on a rounder girl? So there it is on me again. That's the longest setting. My waist is right here. Top of my hips is here. Bottom of my hips is here. So it's easy to get into this bag and reach the bottom. I'm not reaching way down where I can't get to anything. Uh, you can get all the pockets very easily here. Another thing with these bags when you go to snap them is how easy is it to get it snapped? The magnet on this is good. It's not super strong where it's difficult, but it definitely magnetizes quickly. But then finding just the right spot where it clicks in, that's harder. There it goes. It takes a little fidgeting, but it's not super annoying or anything. Okay, so there's the crossbody, and you guys can think whatever you want. For me, I think that that works well enough. I still have the mental montant from Louis Vuitton on my mind, and that's a big reason I'm still thinking about returning this, as well as how small it is. I feel like it may be a little too small to be practical for me especially since I have that Emery bag. However, the black bag doesn't always go with every outfit, so maybe I need one about that size in this color. So much to consider. Now, as a shoulder bag, I can still, and again on the longest length, I can still get down to the bottom of the bag just fine. So if I wanted to go back and forth, um, like wearing it either way without having to adjust the strap, that works. Now let me put it on the shortest setting and see how it is as a shoulder bag. And it does have the one loop here that doesn't move and also the other loop that you can move up and down, which is always a bonus. Okay, shortest setting. And then also noticing it leans forward a little bit. Not a big deal, especially if it's up against your body. Doesn't matter at all. But there's the shortest setting. Still very easy to reach to the bottom, of course. And if I was to do that crossbody, that sits a little high there. You know what? I just thought about something. Please hold. Okay, I'm back. I have this short strap and I wonder 
if I was to put it on here, if I wanted to use this as just a handheld bag and not wear it crossbody, how that would work. That could be cute. You can't wear it over your shoulder, but you could put it over your arm or something, or just carry it like this. Or you could have the strap and a crossbody, and this could hang behind it, or it could hang in front of it, or just thought of something else. Let's hold again. Check this out. Ooh, that's pretty. Yes, I like that better than the leather strap. The leather strap I got from Malto, but Dress Up Your Purse probably has some, and this chain is from Dress Up Your Purse. You could definitely use that as a little handheld bag. You could still have the longer strap on it, and then just wear it like that, and it adds some bling, and it's really pretty. Also adds functionality. Yes, please. And of course, I have a discount code for Dress Up Your Purse, 15% off with the code AUTUMN, so I will leave that in the description box as well with a link to the website. I tell you, the more I play with this, the more I like it, but let's see what fits. Let's start with a couple items that I know won't fit, just again to give you an idea of the size. The pochette accessoire is not going to fit in this bag. A toiletry PM probably won't fit in this bag. Let's see. It's more the base and getting the base through the opening. I think once that's through, maybe it would. No, you can't get it in there. Not gonna happen. Could I put it in upside down? No, that won't happen either. Now let's try some wallets. I'll try the larger ones first. This won't fit. Why does it keep focusing? Okay, there's this focus box on the screen that tells you where it's focusing, and it keeps focusing back here. What is going on back there? Are you guys seeing something that I'm not seeing? Like seriously, is it haunted? Is there a ghost back there? What is happening? It's never done that before. Okay, so the Sarah wallet from Louis Vuitton don't think will fit in this bag. Let's see. Oh, well, it will fit, but it doesn't go down very far. So the bottom of the wallet's about right here, and then it stops. And that takes up all of the bag. So I don't think you'd want to carry a full-size wallet in there. What about something that's the size of a full-size wallet, like the length, but that's thin, like this Felici insert. Fantastic card holder, by the way. This will fit in. Again, it does not go down very far though, but it does leave you with still quite a bit of room in the bag. So feasibly you could. Will it fit in the front pocket? I think it will, because front pocket's a little more narrow. Not as long, yeah, that won't fit. It goes over the edge there. Now let's try a couple of pouches. The medium size Kirigami pouch. Now this one is from Dress Up Your Purse. I thought the Vachetta would look nice with this leather, saddles, all that. There's a theme here. So that will fit in here. However, it's gonna take up a lot of room. You can also fit a lot in here, so that might work for you. The mini pochette from Louis Vuitton. Dress Up Your Purse also has some of these. And will that fit? It will. Again, it takes up quite a bit of room, but again, maybe fit a lot in there. Now, could I stand it up and fit other things in the side? Not really, because of the height there. It ends up sticking out. Well, does it? Because you have, I'm thinking like this, and you know, it looks like it's sticking out, but then you have these end pieces here. So actually, it does fit that way. So you could stand it up and put other things on this side. Good to know. Could I do that with this? Now this one, the benefit of the pochette is that you have the rounded corners, right? which kind of line up with the rounded corners of the bag. Whereas this has squared off corners that don't line up with that. So it sticks out even more. That'll close, but it also fell into the middle. So let's put something next to it so it'll stay in place better. Okay, I have those two, the pochette and that one. It'll still close there. Yeah, it still closes. That still works. And that takes up pretty much all the space in there. The Louis Vuitton Agenda MM. Will that fit? I don't think so. I think it's gonna run into the corners or the rounded corners on the bottom and stick up too far. So yeah, actually it does, but that's all you'd be able to fit into the bag. So now we know the Georgie saddlebag is a fantastic case for the Louis Vuitton MM agenda. There you go. Now if that'll fit, we know the small size agenda will fit. Let's see if I can get, well, hold on. It'll fit standing up and it'll still close because it's not as high as those things on the side. And of course it'll fit laying down. Um, but let's see if I can do that in the mini pochette. I can, and there's still room here for a small wallet or card holder or something else. Like, would I be able to fit my Chanel wallet in there? Yes, pretty easily, actually. So that fits quite a bit. That fits more than I thought it would. I was not expecting to be able to get all three of those pieces in. And I still have the front pocket and the back pocket. So I could put my phone in the back pocket. Not really sure what I'd put in the front pocket. I would still need a place for my keys. Those could go in the mini pochette because really for me there's not a lot else that I would carry in there and then the front pocket could be 
receipts. I don't know. I can still close it very easily. Now with the phone in the back pocket, it does bulge out just a little bit. You can see the edges of the phone there. I expected that to happen when you have a flat pocket. And since we know this bag will fit all of that, then we know for sure that it'll fit the small size Kirigami pouch. Again, this one's from Dress Up Your Purse, which is a fantastic card holder. It'll fit a clay and you could even, let me hang the clay. Well, actually let me hang the clay from the outside, but just in just a minute. And it'll fit a card holder, but let's see if a card holder will fit in that pocket on the interior, the one in the large compartment, and it easily does. You can see the card holders right there. Nice. Now keep in mind that when you put things in those little slip pockets, especially in such a small bag, it ends up taking some of the space away from the compartment itself. But I think even with that small agenda, the Chanel wallet and the mini pochette, I think card holder would still fit in there with cards in it, which is pretty cool. And if not, it would fit in that front pocket. All right, I was gonna put a couple of things just for decoration's sake on the outside the bag like on the D ring. So let's see how a clay would look. Thinking it might be a little too big, but let's look and see. You never know until you try, right? All right, yeah, there's the clay hanging. That's not a good look. I thought maybe the denim with the leather, but it's just too big. And then the last thing I wanted to try, I have a couple of little mini tassels from Dress Up Your Purse. I thought I'd throw those on and see. I thought maybe the Vachetta one would look nice with it. Yeah, that looks all right. Maybe the gold one would look better. So there's the gold tassel. I like that better. I think that looks nice. It goes with the gold on the hardware pretty well. And of course, you could do some bag charms and other things there too, but tassels, always a good look, I think. Classic. That's all I wanted to do with the bag as far as playing with it. So is this bag worth buying and will I keep it? I still don't know 100% if I'm gonna keep it. I'm definitely leaning more toward keeping it than I was at the beginning because it holds more than I thought it would. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, I am impressed with the quality of it. The price is good, $140 for a, a nice, well-made designer bag. Yes, that, yes. I think my biggest hesitation is really still the Mental Montant, but that bag is larger and it has a different look too. I don't know, I'll have to let you know in a future video at some point, maybe my next coach collection or something next year, whether I kept this or not. But I am really impressed with it. I, I am. If I think if you are thinking about this bag and you're on the fence, I would say go for it for all the reasons that we learned in the video today. I'm trying to think like there are a lot of pros that we talked about. I'm not sure there are really any cons to this bag. I think maybe the only reason if you're interested in this bag, the only reason that you wouldn't want to get it is maybe if you wanted the beat saddlebag instead or if there's another saddlebag you might want but yeah i would say worth it totally um one thing i didn't point out earlier is that the front and back of the bag is smushy but the sides are structured you can still squish it like that but there's definitely something in here that's giving it more structure on the sides the metal montant again i've never seen one in person but that seems to be the typical just canvas with fichetta trim. I don't think it really has structure in it. If you know differently, please let me know in the comments. Yes, very good bag. So I will link it below. I'll link the beat bag. I'll link dress up your purse. I'll link whatever else I can remember that I talked about in the video. I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well, staying safe. Hope to see you back here next time and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.